Oh, the things I do to make these YouTube videos. Look at this. You can see how, just how deep it is. I'm in nearly a foot of water. Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see I'm standing by the sea. This is the Suffolk coast. Quite a pleasant place, even on a rainy day like today. I've wanted to come here today because, well, there's two things. There's something just up here which fascinates me and also quite soon there's probably going to be one of the biggest building sites in Europe here along this coast so you look this way that is a nice little village fishing village you may be starting to guess where I am because if we turn right round as I say just you know typical little fishing village and then there a Sizewell A and B nuclear power stations now the plan is to also build Sizewell C nuclear power station which will be further down there. So this is Sizewell A, the old Magnox reactor, not in use anymore. The big dome, that's Sizewell B, that's a pressurised water reactor, which is at the moment producing about 3% of the country's electricity, so that's probably powering all of the homes in Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex. I'm going to go for a walk off inland, we're going to go around, and then we're going to end up further down, we're going to walk past the site of where Sizewell C is going to be built and we'll have a look because there's all this talk of it being right next to a nature reserve I just thought I'd go and observe it all by myself so let's go for a walk in the rain around the boundary of Sizewell so as I walk away from the sea as in the actual sea not Sizewell Sea Sizewell A over there I just want to show you the fishing village the hamlet I suppose it is of Sizewell this is basically it. Quite pleasant. There is a pub around the corner, so we're going to have a look at that. Pretty bit early for a pint. As for, so it goes obviously size well A, size well B, size well C. I don't know, probably going a bit too far into the future. Is there going to be a size well D, E, E, F, G, etc., etc., etc.? I don't know about that, but if we go down the alphabet quite a bit, I'll tell you what there is. There is a size well T, little tea room. It's called size well T, which I think is. Quite a cool, nice, quite a cool, nice name. Unfortunately, in true tea room fashion, it's not open. I suppose I think in this kind of weather, not many people are going to be as mad as me and come here on a rainy day and make a video. Um, up the road is Leyston, the town of Leyston, which is known for, it's where they used to build um, steam engines, as in traction engines. I remember going to the Longshot Museum a few years ago, where actually, um, going back to a family holiday I went on in about 2002, bear in mind we didn't have internet and all those things then, I was fascinated by the idea of nuclear power stations. I'd only seen one or two pictures in books we'd had from the library, I didn't know much about them so I wanted to come and see them. So I persuaded my parents, we went, well first we went to the Leyston, um, to Leyston, went to the Longshop Steam Gym, I persuaded them to drive here just so I could see the nuclear power station. Funnily enough, a few years later, I was on a geography trip to Minehead. How I did it, I, well, I persuaded my teacher to stop the coach so I could get out and take a picture of Hinkley Point nuclear power station. Funnily enough, that's where the other C is being built. They're building Hinkley Point C nuclear power station, which is going to be very similar to size or C. Anyway, I'm going to head on up there. I don't really want to film as I walk past the entrance of the power station, just in case I, uh, you know, raise some security concerns. Past the pub, and then we're going to go out into the country, we should get some different views of the power station. We can have a little bit of a talk about nuclear power in general. I'm now just um, walking past the entrance of the power station, and I wanted to show you, this is the pub, the Vulcan Arms. So, if you want to have a drink in size, well, you can, and then... You know, and just see size will A. That is the um, entrance of the power station. Looking ahead, I can see the camera's really not picking it out, but I can see a row of pylons. You can see various vehicles coming in and out of the site. So, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do any more recording now. I want to get on up to the footpath, get away from civilization. So, I have now turned off the road, I've come down this nice little track and I'm away from, well it seems everyone, but they're on day like today, who else is mad enough to go for a walk around a nuclear power station. We get quite a good view after this hedge clears, look, 
of size well A. Um, if we go up here, on this little bank, you can see there's size well A. Uh, this building here, I think that's probably the old turbine hall. So they're in there are two Magnox reactors, graphite reactors, gas circles up through, the gas heats up, that goes through a heat exchanger which heats the water, boils the water to make steam to power the turbines. Over there, you can just, just about see it, is size well B, that's a pressurised water reactor, a very different form of nuclear reactor. We'll talk more about that later. I've noticed, you can see now, there's the pylons, and just through here, this seems to be, look, there's a huge substation, and then that's where the electricity goes, off down that line of pylons to your houses, if you live in Norfolk, Suffolk or Essex. I'm going to continue down here to get one more view of the power station. I've noticed how Sizewell B blends so well with the land, and I've noticed that most of the buildings are blue and the dome is white, so maybe that's deliberate to be like the sea in the sky. There you go. There's a good view of Sizewell A. I'm going to continue off down there and see where my walk will take me. I'm now probably about a mile and a half away from Sizewell. I've walked inland, as I said, and I'm heading north, but I've just come across there is sensing, and back there I thought I'd better not film passing there, but across the road, or a road under construction. So it looks as though the spades are in the ground. Whether the actual power station construction started yet, if you have a look here, it's a bit like um, in my area where they're building HS2. It's not HS2, but that is the road probably two sides we'll see. So it appears something's happening. I always think it'd been good if they could have extended the railway line which goes to Leyston which was for the nuclear flask trains because when Sizewell A was in operation, so Sizewell A was in operation for 40 years from 1966 to 2006 Sizewell A was generating and the fuel would have been taken away by train probably to sell a field to a lot of the spent fuel from nuclear power stations go. Now with size well B the fuel doesn't leave the site it's permanently stored the spent fuel is permanently stored on the site so you don't get the nuclear flash trains. Interestingly though as on my way here passed through Layston as I mentioned the village and there was a mom a mobile operations man for network rail walking along the line. So the line Although it very rarely sees trains, it isn't actually closed. I think the odd charter train has been down there. Get these enthusiast trains. I think I should try and get on one one day. I think there has been the odd one down there. So, and Layston seemed like, you know, it'd be nice to... Layston station is still there. Well, look. Pictures I took before I did this walk. So, you know nice to reopen the station and give Leyston a passenger service again. Anyway, I'm going to continue this rather bleak, not particularly exciting path. Another interesting thing, I'm doing nuclear power stations, but look at these, these are elm trees. And um, a lot of people think, but they don't have elms, they've all died of Dutch elm disease. They grow, and then they die. They get to a certain height, and then the beetles attack, and they die. Anyway, I'm going to continue off down there. I'm going to loop round back to the sea in the water see and walk towards where they're going to build the nuclear power station see i just had a very pleasant mid walk pint here at the l's foot inn so if you're out this way nice little pub to stop at it has um funny enough because we're in the area i suppose it makes sense but look adnam's beer i've had a very nice pint of that i quite often see it around so it's nice to have it in its local area this is the village of eastbridge there's not a lot here a few houses we're probably about a mile or so inland i'm going to go down here up here i should find a footpath that'll take me back to the sea and then we'll walk back towards sizewell i've had a lot of rain recently and i've given up trying to keep my feet dry it's uh, yeah very wet and all flooded out there all over where you can see the cows on the bank over there. Behind that bank is the Minsmere Sluice. So I think that's meant to take the water out to sea, but as you can see, it's all around us here. Oh, the things I do to make these YouTube videos. Look at this. You can see how, just how deep it is. I'm in nearly a foot of water. I knew I should have done this walk a couple of weeks ago. 
before the rain but well anyway i'm here now i'm determined to get out to where the sea is if i was to go back now um it would just be well i've got wet so i'm not going to get any less wet or drier there was a, a couple of ladies i overtook them just there they sensibly are waiting back there they've decided not to proceed any further but i'm not always sensible especially when it comes to making these videos so i'm just going to wade through here and um get wet but then i've got quite a nice walk along the coast i hope when i eventually up there somewhere get back onto terra firma well i've just about got back onto dry land i'm hoping not to do any more wading today but well we'll have to see what happens i just want to show you this here so this is the minsmere nature reserve now a lot of the time when people talk about the building of sizewell sea understandably people are concerned about you know the local impact on the environment now this nature reserve most of this won't be touched so there's nothing to worry about there i'm just looking i think the water would have been higher if i'd come a few days ago because you can just see all this duckweed up here so i think the water was a lot worse it probably would have been over my knees um if i'd come here well last week maybe i don't know i am just glad to be walking on dry land so that way is looking north so the construction of the power station there will be you know a lot of lorries and everything i think it'd be more sensible if they built a railway like because you've already got the railway to Leyston, just built like a branch of it the Leyston railway originally went to Aldborough, was a normal passenger line and then it's been retained for the nuclear flash traffic in and out of size well a if they built a railway a lot of the construction traffic could come by train and Leyston could get a railway station again you know it'd be uh always will support the idea of any place getting a railway station especially there's no houses built over the line as far as Leyston because it's all intact so i understand like the locals when they build size well see there will be a lot of disruption a lot of extra lorries and road movements but if you built the railway as well with it that could you know um alleviate some of that i don't know if that's the actual plan i'm now going to continue my way up here and get me to the sea um as in the sea not size well sea It'd be interesting to do this walk perhaps in a few years time when they start building size well sea when i've been i've done a few trips to the west somerset railway in the distance i can see the construction of hinkley point c and just see a load of cranes it's all quite impressive it'd be interesting to see what other nuclear power stations do get built in the uk in the future probably after this one i'd put my money on it possibly being bradwell b further down the coast in essex there's the bradwell nuclear power station again a magnox reactor not well, it's finished, it's um, operational life has ended. There's talk of building Bradwell B. Well, Bradwell B will be the generation of Hinkley Point and Sizewell C, but because there never was a, hasn't up till now been a Bradwell B. Um, whether there'll ever be one, possibly at Wilver in Anglesey, it seems to have been shelved, but it may well come back. Possibly another one up in Cumbria could be built in the future, possibly, although probably the least likely one. The cow, I don't know if that's the cow saying he agrees or doesn't agree. The cow's making a noise. Uh, possibly another one at Oldbury on the Seven Estuary. She's already got two. You've already got Barclay and Oldbury, but both are now um, no longer generating. But I think that's probably the least likely of any future nuclear power stations in Britain. It's interesting, if you look at, to look at Europe, how it's going for a change. This year, Dr uh, Germany switched off its final three nuclear power stations to Germany no longer uses nuclear. The French are still very proud of their nuclear power stations and um, they will point, they love pointing them out to tourists, but the moment you take a picture, they accuse you of being a spy. I think that's just typical French humor for you. I think Poland is due to build a nuclear power station. They've not had any up till now. There is a partially built one somewhere. I'd love to go and have a look at that, but it was never finished. Hungary is just signed off, um, well, a while ago now, Pax 2, so, You've got the PAX nuclear power station hungry they're building a second one there and i think they're a further more advanced stage than this so they are cropping up all over europe often on different sites i mean most of those countries we're talking about they're building them not by the sea and land uh, hungry for example is landlocked anyway so that isn't going to be why it's down near the danube as for me getting to the sea i've got at least another half a mile to go looking across nature and continue walking 
and we'll find ourselves on the coast. Not again, look at me, back in the water. I've opened this gate now. Seems ridiculous opening a gate. Opening a gate in the water. Let's shut it quickly just in case any fish get out. <laughs> God, the things I do to make these videos. I really didn't expect it to be this bad. I knew, yes, it rained. I didn't expect this. If you're thinking of doing this walk, it's a really nice walk. Um, don't come in after there's been a lot of rain. Because you're going to, well, I've got no choice now. I've just got to keep walking. I should have worn wellies. I think if I'd worn wellies, it might have gone over the top. So, yeah, what can I do? Anyway, let's go and find the coast. I'm glad to have come to a slightly higher ground and uh, we're going to take a bit of a break from nuclear power for a moment. That's the nuclear power station you can see over there. Let's have a look at something a bit more historic. This little chapel here. Now this, I understand, was part of Leyston Abbey. Now Leyston Abbey is obviously near Leyston. I did go there as a child once when we were on a family holiday up there, so it's quite an interesting ruined abbey. I don't think I'll go there today, but I understand this was you know, one of their outlying chapels. It's interesting. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. So as we come into the chapel, they appear to have, well, firstly, look, there's a new window someone's put in. They appear to have built a pillbox in the chapel. Let's just go and have a look in here. Hey, I can't get through that. I'm upset on the back of the camera on it. I couldn't get around the corner. Right, so this is inside of the chapel, on of the chapel, the pillbox inside the chapel and we're inside the pillbox slightly confusing I know and then there's one of the windows that's shot out of we'll go outside so it appears they've actually built it it is a building in its own right a free you know they've built a wall inside they haven't used the chapel walls they've completely built it inside yeah, let's go back out into the chapel and we have a look here so there's Doorway there of a lentil, as you'll see. This side looks um, even more complete. Have a look at that, and I've got to find my way. I hope I haven't got to go through any more pools, but you never quite know when you're doing these videos. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. You can see the whole of this chapel now. Now that's interesting. That's where we were a moment ago. See what was probably a door to the chapel. You can see how they built the pillbox inside. So, that's a break from nuclear power, a bit of history. I've got to find my way across the marshes. The sea is about a quarter of a mile away or so. I ended up getting my feet wet yet again. Anyway, I'm on the dry land now. That's the Minsmere Sluice, you can see various nature reserves. And here's the sea. So I'm, I'm definitely not going paddling because I've done enough paddling, which I hadn't even planned to do. But I've, you know, I've been paddling. Go down onto the beach today. So that must be Southold just up round there. I remember going there once as a child and then dominating the horizon is sidewell A and B. When we get a bit closer up there I'll have a look see if we can see the site of where C is going to be. We'll see if any groundwork has started taking place and we'll just have a look at the two power stations. I find it quite fascinating. Uh, just sat there generating all that power. I've been walking for about a mile now along the beach. These sort of mini cliffs, size will be, no escaping that. When we get to here, I think we've come to the edge of the what would become the size well sea site. You can also walk along here, it's just easy to walk on the on the sand. So see there's a fence there, there's two men in full orange. So that must be, all of that must be where size will see duplicate power stations would be. Obviously, right next to next to B and then A is that's A there. So it's interesting how B is the dome is white and then the building is blue. Whether that's to blend it in with the sea and the sky, I'm not sure if that's how the architect thought about it. We we'll continue now down here, and very soon we'll be walking right past the two existing power stations. I've been walking for a fair bit now along the coast and as I've mentioned this is all the Sizewell Sea site and then there's B and A. So that is where 
imagine the whole new power station is going to be there. It's going to have a pretty big fit footprint in the new size we'll see. I think it's going to be nearly the size of size what A and B put together. So there's going to be two pressurised water reactors. At the moment, size will B is the only pressurised water reactor we have in the UK. All of the others are advanced gas cooled reactors. Size well A, as I mentioned earlier, was a Magnox reactor. So Magnox reactors and advanced gas cooled reactors are similar. The advanced gas cooled reactors are a development of the Magnox reactors. So they're built out of graphite with um, lots of channels which the fuel rods go in. So these little uranium pellets, which are pretty only about this big, but they have a lot of energy. They a store they go down in these fuel rods and the graphite acts as the moderator the gas I don't, I don't quite get how the nuclear reaction works but the nuclear reaction takes place the gas warms up and warms the water in a pressurized water reactor you have water as the moderator not graphite and but the water has to, I don't, never quite get it but the water flows through and under a high pressure heats up but then it goes through like a separated drum I think and it's on the other side that water heats up into steam so that's like on another circuit so you've got two closed circuits and then there's a third circuit that goes out into the sea which you may be able to see those gantries I think that's where the water comes in and out of the sea that's used for cooling I think they have also got these one of the buildings here has like cooling fans inside I'm not too sure exactly how it works but that would be inside there Another thing I feel I should mention, um, which quite often crops up by people who perhaps don't know too much about nuclear power stations, whenever there's talk of building a new nuclear power station, people say, oh, well, we don't want that because there might be another Chernobyl incident. Well, it's not possible in the same colour way. I'm not saying it's impossible for anything to go wrong. What happened at Chernobyl you could not do in a power station like this. Now, Chernobyl reactor was similar to the Magnox reactors in was made of graphite but it had water water flowed through and the water heated up and there was no pressure vessel these reactors have pressure vessels inside there was no pressure vessel it meant you could, it was more efficient and you could you could refuel the plant when it was at full power with size well B it will run for 18 months they'll switch the power off and then they'll take out the fuel assemblies and refuel the reactor so what happened with Chernobyl was that it was, it basically ran away with itself. It got hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, there's various videos on YouTube you'll be able to see about it to the point it ran away with itself. There's a dog running towards me and barking. Um, so it, it ran away with itself and it got hotter and hotter to the point that just before the explosion, it was producing enough heat probably to power the whole of Russia and Ukraine. Um, and then the reactor just couldn't handle the energy and that's why it blew up. That building is very, very strong. If an aeroplane flew into that, the aeroplane would simply disintegrate. The building would remain standing. That is incredibly strong. So Western reactors are basically stable. They can't run away with themselves in the same way. And China wasn't a meltdown either. It was a meltdown at Three Mile Island. Now that was all contained within the reactor building. And the second reactor was continued to generate itself until 2019. So going up to worry about so yeah it's very very different technology in this these two power stations to what you had in Chernobyl. Shouldn't be too far now and I'm glad the sun's come out because it's great that's the village of Skeleton. I didn't realise we'd be able to get this close so size will be its big iconic dome and there's size away and it's now I'm starting to realise just how big the building is so that's where the two reactors were so i think there'd have been one here the other one's behind so the reactors will still be there they've just got generating and i think i might be wrong but i think that's possibly the turbine hall i've heard that might be due to be demolished quite soon so i have to wait and see but it's hard to sort of convey just how big and vast this site is i personally prefer the the older magnox Reactors, that's the actual size of the reactors. The reactors in there are probably about 10 times the size of the reactor in B. The advanced gas cooled reactors are pretty large, but it seems they've got two reactors in there. 
for the two pressurized water reactors they're going to build so as we'll see down there it seems the site okay it's two power stations but for two reactors so here we've got three reactors in a much smaller site I mean, well, actually there's one or two things i want to have a look at there's something here now i think there used to be a gantry here from some research i did where the spent fuel would have been taken out they must have been taken by lorry to the railhead at Leiston. and that's taken away by a train now i don't think we'll be able to see in there but i think in there there's like these giant wheels they won't be turning anymore because power station's not in operation but they would return any fish it's brought in so if the water's brought in from the north sea to ensure no fish or any other creatures get inside this huge wheel would turn there'll be another one down there that size will be and that would turn and ensure everything's returned back to the sea as i said i have a feeling that structure that structure i think they must be something to do with the power stations i think that pretty much brings me to the end of today's walk it's been about nearly a seven mile walk around the two power stations hope you enjoyed it i've had fun despite getting wet so thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment and from sizewell nuclear power station goodbye